Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to talk about a couple of very, very rare unitron telescopes. Um, and I would first of all like to be honest and point out that neither of these is the legitimate object. Both of these are replicas that I made. The real things are impossible to find. Perhaps three or four copies exist in the world. Anyhow, these are very rare telescopes. This is the E758, my replica of it. Looks a lot like it. It's the same scale and everything. Uh, so this is the E758, and this is the RF80. Both of these telescopes date from the 1980s or so, when Unitron was kind of in the last throes of it, attempting to reach the market that existed at the time. And, they ended up losing. That's why there are very few of these telescopes around. So we'll have a look at these interesting, strange, rare little Unitron telescopes. Here's a picture of an ad for the E758. Uh, you'll notice that it's also got a companion, the A755. And the name does the number designation is very confusing because it's the apparently the same scope just on an Altaz mount. Here are some pictures of an A755 owned by John Volk, and I want to thank John very much for allowing me to show these pictures in my video. You'll notice that John's telescope has uh, three lobes up here on the front. Those are collimation uh, bolts to adjust the, the objective. And uh, the original, I made my replica like the original ads showed it. Uh, it's quite con conceivable that they would have done put the put the adjustment screws on them and a matter of fact it makes good sense it actually makes more sense on a shorter faster telescope than on the longer f15 telescopes to do that anyway here's some pictures of john's Here's the Unitron E758 set up next to a Unitron 142 3-inch telescope on an equatorial mount. Uh, the 3-inch equatorial is a much larger telescope uh, because of the larger mount required to support the larger tube. Now, this one is mounted on the same little mount as the 60mm Unitrons. Really high quality little mount. Everything here is very, very nice. If the optical performance on this was perfect, at least as good as an F15, then this telescope would be the equivalent telescope to that one. Unfortunately, even at their best, these are really good. They did a nice job on the optics, as far as I know. Uh, my understanding is that they did not have anything like ED optics available for these scopes. So the, um, the performance on this scope would have had much more chromatic aberration than this scope. And this scope would not have quite lived up to the expectations that you would get from this scope. This, these scopes are beautiful. And F15 focal ratio, acromat is just fine. It's very difficult unless you have ED glass to make one of these guys in a short focal ratio that doesn't have quite a bit of color, no matter how well you try. So this is uh, not going to be quite the performance that this is, and that is probably the reason for the demise of these kinds of scopes. I now have the Unitron RF80 set up next to the Unitron 3-inch F15 for size comparison. Now the RF80, as you notice, doesn't look a lot like uh, a Unitron anymore. It's painted black. It's got all sorts of strange features. Sometimes they did put a great big uh, Unitron logo on the side, I believe. But by the same token, in all other respects, it doesn't look much like the classic Unitron. Now, this thing, unlike the 758, the E758, uh, did not have ED Apo type glass. This thing has ED glass, so it gives you uh, essentially apochromatic performance, very, very low color performance. 
And one of those would make a very, very nice, especially in a, a rich field telescope like this, a very nice rich field telescope, and still be capable of going to the high powers and delivering good images of planets without a lot of color and so forth. So this telescope would have been a great competitor for the more modern telescopes. It's a big mystery as to why Unitron didn't succeed with these or didn't pursue this. Maybe they had a, pro a problem obtaining the uh, ED optics. That's very, uh, very possible. So one of the reasons for the demise of the RF-80 may have been because uh, it had a lot of competition around that time. Early 90s, uh, here comes uh, Teleview. Actually, Teleview in the late 80s had introduced ED Apo scopes of the 80 millimeter, 70 millimeter caliber, and uh, was really taking the world by storm with high quality stuff. The Teleview Ranger dates from about the same time as this one, and it's a comparable scope, very, very high performance. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the very rare Unitron E758 and RF80 telescopes. Thank you for watching.